signing for us, please. Welcome to Early Days. I'm Jo Zazard and I'm the programme manager. And today is our one-stop shop and it's our busiest day, as you'll see. It's a day where we have a wide range of partners from lots of different agencies coming to deliver their services based on what the families have said they actually want. And it's really good because the, the families can get everything they need here. And I think one of the challenges for me as the centre leader was actually making this happen. When you see it, it all looks very easy, but actually it is quite a challenge to have this, this wide range of, of staff and different agencies all providing their services under one roof. A pretty accurate summary of the leadership challenge to deliver integrated but diverse services at a children's centre. <laughs> this programme will look at how Joe Zazada achieves it, occasionally in the middle of a forest. Would you nominate anyone as a leader, though? Or, or perhaps it was just a uniform? I think Carly, I think Carly showed quite a lot of leadership but it's not, in that. But it's not a domineering leadership, no. it's just, it's just yeah. there and it needs, but yeah. it needs to be because somebody's got to control the situation. We'll also meet Laura Brody, who manages a children's centre in Birmingham and see how her leadership style emphasises delegation to the ultimate degree. This place works if I'm here or not. Now I've probably done myself out of a job. Here they come. Early Days Children's Centre was opened in Sheffield ten years ago. It's home to a variety of co-located services and the centre manager's job is to encourage a diverse set of partners to feel they're all working toward the same goal. I think one of the challenges of being a leader of a multidisciplinary and multi-agency team is obviously I'm only accountable, actually accountable, for two-thirds of the staff that are actually in the centre. So I think one of the leadership challenges is about enabling all of those other co-located partners and the non-co-located, so those who are just coming in perhaps on a weekly basis, a fortnightly basis, some even on a monthly basis, to be able to share the vision. Part of that has been helped by actually having a very clear ethos and welcoming feel so that everybody who enters the building, whether they're a service user or another partner coming in to deliver their services, they're made to feel welcome and made to feel that their role is as important as, as anybody else's. Part of Joe's vision is a one-stop shop approach, including services like midwifery, community health and speech and language therapy. And it's popular with service users. This is my second child, I've got a nine-year-old son. So to have something like this now, because there wasn't anything when he was born, to have this now is really good because you've got your health visitor, you've got your midwife. While you're pregnant, you can pop in at any time to speak to a midwife. You can come and speak to an health visitor at any time. Get them weird every week. I think it is really good, everything that they've got all under one roof. Straight after this one-stop shop as well, there's a baby massage class. So a lot of mums stay over, do the baby massage, and obviously it, it's another reason to come out, and again, it's informal and fun. I look forward to coming on a Thursday. Yeah, I, I do. do. <laughs> Sad life. <laughs> See what you've done to me. If you want to stay, you know, and have a children have a little play, then that's fine. Okay, yeah, no problem, yeah. I'm Sue Clensey, one of the health visitors at the Children's Centre, um, and I'm working here with my colleagues today at the One Stop Shop. Obviously, health visitors are managed by Joe, the sort of Children's Centre manager, under the Action for Children Bella. We are employed and managed by the PCT and obviously direct health visitor line management. I think what's interesting is that we're almost a piece of a jigsaw that fit together and share a philosophy and a culture, which I think here really has been created from the beginning. We are very much an inclusive part of the Children's Centre, um, and it's knowing each other's roles and responsibilities within that dynamic, working with families, and you know having the confidence with each other within each other's roles, and good communication is obviously key to success. I think being a multi-agency, multidisciplinary team in name is actually quite difficult. I do think co-location makes a huge difference. It's fair to say that I think it, it has been quite a process getting the health partners, particularly midwifery, co-located and, and fully integrated into the children's centres. I've been having a lot of um, like dizzy spells and lightheadedness just lately, but. No, I feel well. Hmm. But I think once the midwives came into the children's centres and for themselves could see the benefits of, the, of being co-located with a wide range of other disciplines, it became obvious that that was really the, the best way to go. 
<laughs> jo firmly believes that staff development is the secret of her leadership success. And once a year, everyone heads for the woods for a team building session. Uh, the objective is to get all your team members from one side of the web to the other. Every year, ever since I've been a programme manager, we've had a development day, time out as a whole centre. At the top, my priority is actually team morale and team development. And, and I think by getting away and having some shared activities that are fun-based, so they're not necessarily based on organisational priorities, it enables us to learn what motivates each other to learn what people's strengths are, to see what people's strengths are. Yay! Well done, team! <laughs> but it's not all about having fun in the forest. The second strand of our development days has always been around some organisational um, priorities. So for this year, we're actually going to be working on outcomes so that we can all sit down as a shared group and actually be able to look at the outcomes. So every single member of this staff team, not just those that are employed by us, can clearly articulate the outcomes of the service they're delivering. If we don't get the parents in a position where they're able to manage meeting these, their child's needs themselves, then we've failed, haven't we? Because we don't let families get into debt. We've got a very clear charge in policy. We've got a very clear policy for managing um, debt, haven't we? We contact families early. I see that as one of my key leadership aims and tasks throughout the year. It is very difficult to do. It's very hard work to organise, but the outcomes are excellent for us as a team. And obviously then the outcomes for the children are greatly enhanced by having a staff team who are all very clear what it is that they're aiming to do over the next year. So we've got 12 outcomes now that we're actually um, can say are the ones that we think um, early days children's centre really meet. OK? Morning, Dimitri. Morning, Dimitri. Back in Birmingham, Alan's Croft is a relatively new children's centre, open for just a year. Its leader, Laura Brodie, who was awarded the title Primary Head Teacher of the Year at the National Teaching Awards, has a leadership style characterised by a high level of delegation. For me, leadership isn't about me leading. It's about our team of senior leaders leading. And this place works if I'm here or not. Now I've probably done myself out of a job. Like but actually, the senior leadership team oh, are the people doing? that Did lead this centre. I guide the team, yes, but we lead this centre together. I have invited Angela, the mentor from the primary school, into the family support meeting for next week mm -hmm. so that we can um, look at the list and start to compile appropriate information to be passed on. Our leadership structure here is probably quite unusual. I started as a head teacher of a nursery school, so I'm head teacher here still of Anscroft Nursery School. But as this whole um, place developed, uh, I became really what, what we like to call head of centre. We also have here an assistant head teacher, we have an assistant centre manager and we have a nursery manager who manages the daycare part of our provision. So we've got lots of different people at that level and we've got a child development centre coordinator um, who has a health background and she coordinates all the work around the child development centre here. And so we have lots of people that can support in that leadership team. So we're trying all the time to engage um, fathers and males of families in the services. I don't know about your early birds. Do you get dads into that? Because you seem to last time. Yeah, we've had one, one dad's come yeah. this time. And there's another mum who said her partner will come when he can, but not yeah. to every week. So. You can't run a children's centre like this without having really effective communication. One of the ways in which we communicate effectively and discuss things well and try and have some democracy really around the decisions is through all our different types of meetings. With such a high level of delegation and trust, it's not surprising that Laura prioritises staff development, holding regular appraisal and planning sessions with key staff. I wanted to catch up with you, first of all, on your appraisal form anyway, on your working toward element, but also to find out how the Senko course is going. OK, yeah, it was really good. Last week um, we were talking about behaviour management and I think I'm going to come back and talk to the twos to threes about that.
especially with some of the children that are in there at the moment. Okay. At last count, we had 48 education staff and 42 of them are people from this local community. Personally, I get tremendous, um, just real support and help from these people because I can't zoom in here from outside this centre and develop services. So for the centre itself, obviously, if you've got the people of the community working in it, you, you're on a winner, really, because you know that you've got the grassroots feelings and the ideas of this community. Now, you've got your foundation degree yeah. and you're doing your SENCO degree, so we've got, we've got that in here as, um, as part of the targets for you for this year. Um, I think we do need to look at the team that you're working with okay. and how we structure that in light of um, some of the needs of the new children that are going to be starting in September. My name's Anne McNutt, I'm a SENCO in the Children's Centre. I came here as a parent with my daughter and I was a parent volunteer. I had no inkling to want to work with children, even though I've got two of my own. <laughs> I wanted to work in the office, but after talking with Laura, she's an inspiration and she inspires you to go on and do other things and she, she saw something in me, asked me if I wanted to work voluntary in the nursery with children um, and then supported me to go on and do my MVQs. Like many other leaders, Laura faces the challenge of making sure that all their disciplines work in an integrated way. The sternest test of success is whether it works for service users. I'm Michelle, I'm Thomas's mum. He comes to nursery, he's been coming here for the last two years, he has cerebral palsy. He uses a nursery and he also uses the physio facilities, speech therapy and our OT. Oh, look, you've done it all the way round now. How far away are we? Oh, we're nearly there. <laughs> nearly there, Come on, then. You're nearly there now, Thomas. Everybody knows what is wrong with Thomas, about his needs. So... You don't have to explain one thing, then start all over again and explain another thing to another person. They all know anyway, it's just one, because they all work together. School teachers, doctors, physios, they're all, they're all working together. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, he was doing good. Uh, we're just taking his gaiters off, so, but uh, starting to walk a bit better with the gaiters on with that now, so with the walker. I like to think of it as making a nice sort of hammock for children and families, and if they sit on it, it's not going to collapse and break, because each member of the leadership team, and each service itself, it, you know, it, the, the main members of each service are working so closely together that people don't fall through the net. And that's our, our main aim here. And as a leader, you've got to recognise that that's what you need to do. Then you have to get people to interweave with you. And that, and that can be a challenge, but if you keep going back to core values, it doesn't go wrong.